cage in the CR6 after their altercation with Michael Denham yesterday forced Blue Golden to join the ranks of those withdrawn from the event. But not everybody was unhappy about that. Oh yeah, it slips up a couple of places, yeah, yeah, real easy. <laughs> Without yeah, doing it too hard. But yeah, you've got to look after the machine and make sure it gets through and that, so yeah. Yeah, so um, yeah, it's probably uh, two days are probably easier, but uh, four days, yeah, you've just got to look after things a bit better, so. And the field was all hoping to move up again when the wheels literally started to fall off the auto leaders' campaign through the opening stage. Lost the front wheel, no wheel nuts, and yeah, a bit of a mistake we made overnight, I suppose. We probably lost 15 minutes. I'm not too sure how much we lost, but yeah, we spent a bit of time trying to get it back on and trying to get it up, park it up a tree to get off the ground, that sort of stuff. So yeah, it was quite fiddly. And then even the navigation, we got a little bit lost in that last section, but yeah, I think everyone did in the same area that we got through. Luckily for Owen, his lead was sufficient to hold off John Pursehouse, who was making careful navigation decisions to close the gap. But the all-new car stair stage was testing their skills. Jason Noonan might have won the opening stage, but didn't do his chances of taking the bottom step of the podium much good when he took a wrong turn. That mistake, and a stage win for rookie Josh Wilson, secured Wilson third outright in the auto division. By the lunch stop at Poon Kerry, the autos were still in the Indian file they'd started that day. David Schwartz made up for the disappointment of losing one of his Husqvarna teammates in leg three, securing the popular over 45 category win. We still enjoy riding and still enjoy racing up and down those tracks, it's good fun. Schwartz held off the flying Kiwi Tony Rutter, who had to be content with second place in the over 45s in his second attempt at the Sunraiser Safari. This game is so much like golf. You know, you get the good shot and it's all going good and then you get the bad shot and you just get so frustrated with yourself. But, uh, oh, I'm loving it. Amber Simon Arthur spent the morning trying to chase down third place Matt Gillespie, playing catch up after a bad start in League One. I think we're leading the 450 class and I think we're fourth outright, I feel like. We're third on the road, but fourth outright. Mm -hmm. um, we've just taken another maybe five minutes today out of third. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very tight. I'm going to do everything I can with any of that little stage left, but yeah, don't worry, I'll give it a full nudge. But it was Jake Smith who led from start to finish, securing the silverware in the moto division for the second year in a row. Experience getting the better of Toby Hedricks, who is consistent and fast, and will definitely be a force to be reckoned with in the future of cross-country rally. Yeah, if there's anyone you want to come second to, it's Jake. He's very well experienced at this, fairly well, very accomplished at this NAV rallies. And God, I still remember as a kid growing up, watching videos of him, looking up at him, and now to be here competing with him and um, battling with him is pretty, pretty cool. So, no, I'm just happy to get it end in, in one piece, and I've enjoyed it. It's been awesome. Oh man, I nearly made a mess of it there. I sort of second guessed myself. I switched back to make sure I was on the right track. So I'm um, guessing I got it done. It would have been tight though, probably within a minute, I reckon. Hopefully, rallying keeps happening in Australia and we can keep doing more and more rallies. And, um, you know, guys like Toby can, can come through and, and, and do really well. So. In the auto division, Glenn Owen provisionally held on to the win after his scare in the morning was just that. He thundered home in his buggy to secure his first Sunraiser Safari title from John Pursehouse. Yeah, like I said, we all have our days and we hadn't had a bad day yet, so today was it. Pursehouse having to settle for second after a tough week of competition. Certainly has, and that was a bit of a rough stage as well. Uh, I think, think we managed to um, come, out, come second overall. So the third annual Sun Rager Safari Cross Country Rally is done and well and truly dusted and there's been plenty of that this year. We'll catch you all again in 2020.